What's adding to that? We wrote the news last night about a new website, new clothing company. Website is titled www.titus. I'm sorry, wwwtitus 4 champ That is Titus, the number four, champ.com. You'll be able to see right now currently your three shirts that are available. Please go on there. Facebook page will be debuting this week. Instagram and Twitter will be debuting this week as well. If you need to email any ideas, any orders, please go on the website or email at titus4champ at gmail.com. Of course, Ringy Mark takes care of the inventory. We have all sizes from extra small all the way up to, um, I believe, the biggest extra size. Extra fat. Extra. <laughs> uh, somebody just <laughs> Sunday night uh, just asked for a 5X. Yes, a 5X shirt. So uh, oh. do, we, do we go past the 5X, Mark? No, Mark? no. No, we do no. not. But but here's what I want to throw in to everybody who's listening who has a social media account. Okay? Tweet out. TitusForChamp.com at an image of the Titus for Champ shirt, and any one of your friends that purchase because of your tweet under the Matt Radio will pay you a two dollar referral fee. Okay. There you go. So, so here's the deal: you got a hundred followers, ten followers, a thousand followers. You put out TitusForChamp.com, an image of the T-shirt. Your friend purchases. Send us the email after that friend purchases, and we're going to send you $2. Okay? And all you got to do is put it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. You know, put it out there. All right? So we're going to pay you $2. Tell me one other T-shirt company that's going to give you money for tweeting them. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. I know that's, Game Boy's all over that already. That's that's remarkable. You you mean to tell me you go you buy the shirt, you tell your friends and them to go buy the shirt, and you get paid. That's not that easy. not 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 no fifty percent off. Buy one get one free. You actually get money, which is something Tell that, that hey, money. you know, <laughs> everybody yep, else may be talking about it, but we're actually doing it. Yeah, you got Indeed. ten friends who buy Game Boy. You got ten friends who buy. That's twenty bucks in your pocket. What? And and all you cool. had to do was send out a tweet. So you got to do. So you got to do. It's that easy. Now, okay. Angry Mark. Even Gil, what, what? even even Gil can do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to 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 a man, Gil and Razor Cabron. Shout out to that show. I believe they're going to be calling in as well. Um, me and Angry Mark was on that show last night. I think we did double. What did Angry Mark? What did we do? Double? Double, triple time last night? Did Under the Matt Radio <laughs> and did uh, that show? You have, you have no idea, brother. All right. The Angry One was drunk. The Angry One was hung over this morning. He was on four hours sleep. And it's all because of Razor and Gil. So thank you, you bunch of cool motherfuckers. But you yes. kept me up way past the angry bedtime. Holy shit. You got to get energy drinks, hungry Mark. Keep you up. Too much water in them. <laughs> <laughs> of course, and we can't forget our great female correspondent and female assistant on Twitter, Afrocentric Queen, at Butterfly. 206, that is at B-U-T-T-A-F-L-I-206. Also, we cannot forget our incredible sponsors on MortalSeats.com. Please check them out for any tickets that you may need. Sports events, you got baseball coming up. Hockey is still going on. The NBA is still going on. The playoffs are starting soon. You have concerts. Janet Jackson is coming on on a concert. DMX. Once he get up out the hospital, we're still going to be touring. You want tickets for these events, go to ImmortalSeats.com. Or you can download the ImmortalSeats.com app on your Android or iPhone device, mobile device. NFC Game Boy, anything we forgetting? No. 
No. I think I think we I think we covered it. Mortal seats, man, they they the truth. They got us to WrestleMania. Hey, and a more and Immortal Seats, if they're looking for somebody to take care of their T-shirt demands, we're, there you we're go. the people. We can do it. We can print them T-shirts and beat their price. You know? So, Mortal Seats, if you're out there and you're listening and uh, you want somebody who's going to get their T-shirts printed up for a better better fee, contact Titus for Champ at gmail.com. Of course, Elijah Burke mm-hmm. retweeted us as well. About a couple minutes ago Shout out to him Now before we even start talking about The various topics we will tonight Is we will make an announcement right now I'm the Matt Radio course As we always say we make history We bring the biggest and best guests to the world Of radio What is now called podcasting Even on our YouTube channel We made history in viewing greats From the world of comedy Wrestling, MMA UFC, everything else. Thank you for the random beep. I'm not sure what it is. But tonight, we will announce we've had the Jim Rosses, we had the Eric Bischoffs, we had the Jeff Jarrett, all of them. But tonight, we will announce that coming March 15th. Drum roll, hold on. Drum roll, because I was a part of this. Here's drum roll. Drunk drum roll. <laughs> that is the Trump roll. Yeah, <laughs> the Trump roll. We announced March fifteenth, eleven p.m. Eastern Time, live Tuesday night here under the Matt Radio. We'll be bringing none other than the former head writer for WCW, former man that was in charge of WCW. He was former writer for TNA. He was the man that helped Vince McMahon jump over the hurdle of WCW and help bring the Attitude Era. Bringing none other than the man himself, the bro of the wrestling world, Vince Russo. The man himself, Vince Russo, will be coming to Under the Mat Radio March 15th, 11 p.m. It is definite. It is legit. Saw the Vince Russo earlier today. Even even the angry mutts are celebrating. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) Years in the making. Vinny Russo coming. Please be ready. It is legit. Oh, it, uh, you know the boy got some questions for him. You know uh, I'm going to get him. Oh. I'm going to get him. There's no other way. I'm going to get him. Oh, yeah, we, we, we already got JR. We already got Bischoff. Next one on the line, Russo. Got to get him. This is already said. Fans, of y'all listening, you know Tech, NFC, Game Boy, Salt Team, Angry Maw, LSR, Afrocentric Queen, the whole staff. We're going to get them. It's, it's done. You know what I mean? Yes. Make sure y'all tune in. Make sure y'all listen. We're going to get them. It's, it's, it's all right. I mean, it's... it's whew. That's all Making history as always. Angry Mark definitely was a part of it. Tech, the whole staff was definitely shout out to Angry Mark and myself. Vinny Brew came to us. Head up Angry Mark, hit me up, wanted to come on to the show. There you go. Man, special shout-out to Elijah Burke, who was a big part yes. of making yes, this happen. Is. So thank big you, part. Pope. You know, thank you, Pope. You know, 100 proof to you, brother. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, of course, two weeks to prepare, guys. All of the fans, listeners, listen to this live or archived any questions that you got, email us, tweet us, Facebook us, Instagram us, text us, direct messages. You have two weeks. Russo's ready. He wants you to bring your questions. And I'm pretty sure one episode ain't going to do. We already had the Bischoff trilogy. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have part one of Russo. Here's my suggestion. If fans want to start submitting questions with the hashtag AskRusso, Okay, I say we select five special fan questions. Five. So get those questions in because you know what? It's going to be limited time with interest. So the time is valuable. So I would say it's the top five fan questions. And let's not make them, you know, make them intelligent fans, all right? Just because I drink a lot doesn't mean you guys can't think better than me. Well, most of you can't, but that's besides the point. So, hashtag. Ask Russo, 
send it to Under the Mat Radio, five best questions, they get on the air, that's it. If you don't like it, sorry, you just have to listen to our questions. I'm loving it. I'm loving that idea. What what better way to get the fan interaction? What better way to get y'all motivated? What better way to get Vince Russo on the hot seat? Get him pumped up. Get him wired. Get him whatever. We just had Elijah Burke. We just had the Pope, and, and even the Pope was stuttering. You know what I mean? And this is a man who, who's 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 nice with the words, and even we had to make sure he was comfortable. So you can only imagine. Great idea. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. What the? What? Are, I don't even know where I'm at right now. This, this is beautiful. This is truly I'm beautiful. Gonna, I'm going to mail you guys a question on a postcard since I don't do social media. So yeah, what's I'll, just, I'll, I'll, I'll just get your address again. I'll just, you know. You know I'll right 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 see my address. You know I moved from that one, right? I, I got a bigger house now, but, uh, yeah, I got to get ex- you that. That, yeah. explains <laughs> what, that explains why you haven't been returning my mail. I'm sorry. I thought I told you. I really did. And then I found no. out, you know, ah. I'm sorry. That, man, was, that was my, that was my mistake. Coastal, man, you know all them big ass packages that UPS almost arrested me for? Holy shit! <sighs> now, and you weren't there. I wasn't. I, I had to move. It was. It was. It was urgent. I had to get low real quick. I didn't you know think how about hard it. it. I'm sorry. To get that midget in a box. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> oh man. What? Holy so, shit! Hornswoggle now, was pissed. Now, now, well, so, be so pissed. He's, brother. Saltine brother, your, your thoughts and welcome, Tof. Got you, got you here. Also, Tof live. Um, follow Tof on Twitter. At Tof knows best. The connoisseur of apple juice. Did I get that right? The connoisseur of apple juice. Yep, yeah, that, yeah. that sounds pretty legit. I think if I was a gym leader in Pokemon, I would probably, you know, like when you go to a gym and it has like their name and like some random ass like quote. That would definitely be my quote in a gym. Be like gym leader Tof, the connoisseur of. Uh, Apple juice. I like be a grass type gym leader and all that. Mm, yep, counter for apple mm. juice. Angry Mark is beer, so is apple juice. Well, yeah. I guess I can be wine. I'm, 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 I like wine. PMK has the fruity drinks. You have the wine and that's You know. Yeah, I got a wine. Salt team, brother. Well, he got you know. salt. He got salt water. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> your thoughts, your thoughts, brother, on uh, Vinny coming to Under the Man wow. Radio. Wow, this is a big shocker to me, and I know you're the man with the prizes, so you don't tell anybody until the big announcement, which was a great shock to me. This could be a very controversial and very educational um, conversation with Vince Russo, so I'm ready for this, and I can't wait to talk to him. Hmm. So, real quick, your thoughts, Vince Russo, if with, this is two and a half years in the making, coming to Under the Mat Radio. Cool. I've already talked to you privately about it. A certain person is going to be really pissed off. He knows who he is, and I expect World War Three to happen soon, but oh well. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Let the salt... <laughs> <laughs> and, the thought come. and his uh, text will validate this It was all the timing of the social media That made that happen Yes, yes. it was Our, it, social was. Media. it was It was total You know It all worked out You know Shout out to You know Vince Russo Jeff Lane Gil All yes. the people that are behind the brand You know This The stars aligned And it finally happened And the people who You know Say that you know Vince Russo, you know they can talk. Here's one thing: I have openly said numerous times, the only other podcast I'd listen to is Nuclear Heat. Okay, because Vince Russo doesn't hold back. He, you know, he tells it the way it is. All right, love him or hate him. Angry one here. The only person I don't talk shit about is Vince Russo, and that's saying something. Because I can talk shit about everybody, but not him. You know, um, mm-hmm. on, a, on a more serious note, one thing that I've always wanted to give Russo props for, and uh, I did tell him this on Twitter a while back, and he actually retweeted it, so that's cool. Uh, people give Russo a lot of you know crap over the years, 
But one thing I've always liked Russo for and respected him for is he actually cared about the mid card. You know, you can say whatever you want about his ideas, but creatively speaking, he always had something for mid card dudes. And I've said this before on the show. One of my favorite openers of all time is uh, SummerSlam '98, D'Lo Brown against Val Venus for the European title, Madison Square Garden. That was the opening match, and not only was it the opening match, it had a story, and the match went like 12 plus minutes. Something like that would never happen today. Today, that would be a pre-show match, and like nobody would care. If you just look at everywhere Russo's been, WCW, TNA, WWF, when he was there, everybody had something. Everybody had a gimmick. Everybody had a storyline. Everybody was doing something. You know, you can make fun of the execution of it, but the bottom line is that everybody was over. So it's real hard for these. Hmm. I love these things. Since more you got them, cinnamon ones. If you want it, right? Are you you serious? Tech. 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 Hey. Tech. Can you hear me? Yeah, man. Do we lose Tech? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 You you messing up the show, man. Toph was talking. You know what I'm saying? You, you, You talking about? Some cookies or something? Oh, 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 yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't like yeah, yeah. Eating right now, sorry about that. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, you did just yeah, get off work. That. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, just right. got off work. So, can you continue, sir? Yeah, please do. Yeah, I, I was just saying that Russo always had something for the mid-card. You know, the mid-card guys, they were over, they had characters, so that's what I always liked about them. Well, good shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I have to agree with you, and I... You said that on a prior show before, and I had to look that up. And I actually went back and saw um, that Summer Slam because you told me about it. And it was really good. Like, I, I was really surprised. Um, like, yeah, I never really... yeah, and yeah, like, yeah. when I say that. Was when... good. Yeah, and when I say that, fans think I'm exaggerating, but I'm not, like, you know, because you have the WWE Network now. So, like, to any of the listeners out there that have the network, you have the money, you pay for it. Go back and look at WWF during 97. Look at it during 98. Literally, everybody was over. Everybody had a character. Even the low-card guys that were destined for nothing but, like, opening the show, they had a story. Crash Holly, he was hardcore champion. Remember Kai and Ty mm-hmm. the stupid little segments, you know, even though it was, like, yep. racial. Remember when they yep. cut off Val Venus's penis Chubby and Chubby stuff Chubby. like that? Yeah, 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 yeah everybody exactly. just... It's just the little stuff, man. Like, everybody had a character. Like, how many times today do you watch Monday Night Raw and you see, like, a Dolph Ziggler or a Miz or a Ryback or a social outcast? How many times today do you see, like, a low-card guy and, like, you don't care? They're not in any storyline. They have no character. Like, no one cares. Like, that was not the case when when Russo was there. He made sure all the low-card dudes and the mid-card dudes had something. It may be stupid, but they were over. And you can't deny that. He he at least did that, and that's one of the positive things about Russo I've always liked, and fans just seem to, like, never talk about it because, I don't know. And he did that consistently everywhere he went, WWF, WCW, even TNA. Remember the little X Division paparazzi thing he did? That was hilarious mm-hmm. with, the, with the work he did with Kevin Nash. He deserves props for that, and, like, no one ever gives Russo props for that. So, you know, props well, to Russo for always caring about mid-card guys. We can ask Russo when we get him on. Who was behind GTV? One of some of the wrestling <laughs> mysteries. <laughs> you remember that? Remember that Angry Mark and Saltine GTV? Yeah, I remember that. Backstage segment, and people wonder who the hell um, made those cameras and everything. I remember, and even to this day, trying to remember who made the um, show. Just like in Demolition Man, what was up with them three seashells? What was they for? That was the question of the movie. Yeah, that is, that is a good question. <laughs> I, I, I think the real question in Demolition Man was how did Taco Bell become the sole survivor of the fast food war? Speaking of Taco Bell, Angry Mark, I know uh, yeah, Taco Bell was real dead to your heart last night, brother. I have no comment. On that subject matter, <laughs> uh, that you know. So this is all I have. So, I have one thing to say to Taco Bell. <laughs> well, 
Uh, of course, as we always talk, uh, shout out to my good buddy, wrestling publicist Mark uh, Crystal, uh, who uh, works very close to Rob Schamberger, a great artist, friend of ours, who does, of course, you've seen his work all over WWE Films, all over WWE Network. i um, pretty sure Rob will be at WrestleMania um, doing, uh, you know, uh, very exclusive compositions that are asked for him by Vince and by the fans. Uh, Rob just did a great piece for Finn Balor. He did one for, um, what was it, Becky Lynch, the the last kicker, the the steampunk girl, uh, for mm-hmm. her. And he just did one for, I forgot, his latest artwork. But um, please check them out. Of course, uh, Mark Crystal sent me last night, because we always joke about uh, what old TV show be TNA in their ratings. Reruns of Nash Bridges is the newest show this week to defeat TNA in their ratings. So... Mm. Good show. Shout out to them as well. We're going to go a little backwards. So it's on about Raw. Uh, re- just coming out today, Stone Cold Steve Austin says uh, publicly that he feels Roman Reigns needs to turn heel. Start off, NFC Game Boy. Do you agree with Austin or disagree? How you feel about that? Then if I angry Mark, no. uh, he's awake. We can get him to speak. Uh, I mean, we've been talking about that for, for about a year now, maybe more. Uh, of course he needs to go heal. I, I thought he would probably went heal uh, last year after the Royal Rumble and stuff, you know what I mean, with him. Uh, but, you know, of course, they they, they, they switched everything. But, yeah, he, he should have been healed. I mean, we, we all know that. I mean, it is what it is. All right. Angry Mark. I know we talked about this a lot, but Stone Cold Steve Austin coming out publicly. Roman Reigns needs to be healed. Your thoughts, Angry Mark? Uh, okay, well, considering that he's finally saying this and everybody else has already been saying it for a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> congratulations, Stone Cold Steve Austin. You finally are saying something that people agree with. Could care a lot. So he's a fucking cor- he, He's a corporate puppet. Who cares? Yeah. Damn, all the time. Okay. You agree with Austin? Should mm. Reigns turn heel? Yeah, I think it's time for him to turn heel. It's time to be different. Now he's injured. Now he can just like watch the show that uh, and like do something spectacular at WrestleMania. That could be a great work. I would be. Highly entertained if that happened because it sounds like WrestleMania seems like it's down and dumb. But if there's hope with that happening, yes, it could be a good show. A big swerve. Real quick, Tof. I mean, if they want to turn him here, I guess. I mean, obviously, him being a baby face isn't working out. Personally, I think it's too late for Roman. That's another story altogether, but. But yeah, if Stone Cold says turn heel, then you should probably turn heel. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, mean, he, I feel he should turn heel. Biggest swerve. I know the fans love him. He's the next big baby face besides Cena currently. Of course, Dean Ambrose, you know, we'll argue he's up there with Ziggler, but Reigns is up there with the merchandise. But uh, would WWE make, take that chance? Gotta do something. Definitely have to do something for that. Uh, in, a, in a topic, see, we did mention this a little bit. Get a, a, a NFC Game Boy thoughts and saltine. Uh, a lot of people speculating what Stone Cold show. A lot of people, IWC, aren't really as happy or pumped about it. They feel Stone Cold is being a puppet for the network. He's not being as edgy as he should be. His shows are starting to become a little lackluster and boring. Do you guys agree that Austin show isn't as cutting edge as it used to be? Do y'all feel since it's on the network now? It's, the the material has been uh, laxed. Hmm. hmm. Well, I think we said this like a week or two ago, and I think uh, you and Tolf uh, was talking about. Uh, yeah, I, I think that it has changed. It has gotten a lot lackluster. It's lost a lot of the substance, um, mainly because it's still on the network. You know, I think back when it was in this podcast, you know, back. You know, he had a lot more freedom to say and discuss 
And if you look at Austin, you, you can kind of tell that he's holding back. I mean, especially from the interviews he's been doing prior before he even came to the network, you, you can really tell that he's just he's holding back. I, I would love for shit, even us to interview Vince McMahon or something, you know what I mean, and ask him real, real questions. But, you know, when he did it, it was okay. But you can tell a lot of that stuff he was he was already ready for. He already knew the questions and stuff. So, yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, it's, it's losing its substance and it's becoming very mediocre. Go ahead, Sassi. Absolutely. It seems like since he like put his um show on the network, it seems like it's kinda of like slowed down. When it first came on it was more like he was like straight to the point on it. Like since he's working with WWE, since he has because he keeps having problems back and forth with it and I'm wondering why would you work with a company that's doing stuff that you don't like? I mean, dude, you have to like understand like you working for them, and then you gonna say, "Oh yeah, now I got my show in there." But when you with yourself, you was okay. Now you with them, it's kind of like you hesitating to say how you feel, and that's not good on Austin. Okay. And it seems like he's—I I hate to admit it, I hate to say this to the guy—he's weak now. He's weak, and he should be more on on that show. He really should. Hmm. I, I, I can agree on that one. I actually concur. Yep. Is that the word concur? I concur. Concur. Yes. I concur. Yeah, All so right. if your thoughts. <laughs> hey, we already said this on a previous show. Uh, his show's gotten lame and people are giving it a pass. The, the two big examples for me is when he interviewed Triple H and when he interviewed Edge and Christian. When he had Edge and Christian on the show, everybody was wondering what Christian's status was. Was he retired? Was he part-time? Like, What's the deal? And he didn't ask the question. It's supposed to ask the hard-hitting, edgy questions. And then when he had Triple H on the show, it, what kind of upset me about the Triple H thing was it was weird because at the time Triple H was feeding with Daniel Bryan. And then, like, as soon as the show started, like, the first question Steve Austin asked Triple H was, is Kayfabe dead? And Triple H was like, I guess so. So, like, it started off really good because it's like, oh, so they're pretty much acknowledging kayfabe is, is pretty much dead. So since they're talking about kayfabe being dead, I'm thinking, okay, that's a really good opener. Maybe Austin will just ask him all kinds of questions. And, you know, when they had Triple H on the show, it was hashtag Ask Triple H on Twitter. And then you simply put a question like, you know, hashtag Triple H, or should I say hashtag Ask Triple H and say, Triple H, why do you always have a water bottle with you? Like, just simple questions like that. And when they did the show... Ask, uh, hashtag Ask Triple H Booker T versus Triple H was trending. That was trending on Twitter. That was clearly the most asked question. So I know Steve Austin saw it. He's supposed to be edgy. You know, everyone wants to know the situation with Booker T. What was that about? Why did Triple H win? Why was the bill that way? Why did Triple H hit the pedigree on Booker and he was down for an eternity? And, like, he didn't even answer in the question. And I just lost a lot of respect for Austin because he's supposed to be edgy and he didn't even acknowledge it. That was just... That was just like straight up like WWE like controlling the show. There's no defense for that. He's he's a puppet. People, you know, they they attack Jericho for it, but when Austin does it, fans give it a pass. I'm like, no, 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 Austin, no. I haven't listened to his podcast since then. That was that's not cool, dude. Mm. Angry Mark, I know your feelings about. Stone Cold, I already said, I mean, he's a fucking puppet. What more do I got to fucking say? I'm trying to fucking drink a beer. You need need a fucking puppet. You you need some water. No, I don't need any fucking water. You hydrate with the proper amount of beer. Okay? (laughs) I don't get cramping. My muscles are still good. My liver's a little spotty. But that's okay. I can live with that. You know, when when the liver acts up, I drink light beer. <laughs> well, fruity drinks like BMK. No, I will not stoop to the fruity drink. <laughs> I got. Do, do y'all feel? And and I and like I said, I agree with everybody with Austin being a little soft now. Do you guys feel? You know, Bret Hart now has the show Sharp Street Radio. Just talked about WrestleMania 32, the cancer, blah blah blah. Do y'all guys feel? It's, it's too many shows out here. I don't count our, our show was out before podcasting was even a thing for wrestling. 
No, it's all with radio. But do y'all guys feel that the product is getting watered down as every other legend is trying to have their own show? What do y'all guys feel about that? But y'all guys decide to tune into Bret Hart show, or well, y'all, y'all just don't care? And it's a Game Boy? Uh, I got a tough question. I really don't care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about it. I mean, you really, do you really care? Uh, I don't. So exactly. Okay. I'm like the fans and everybody. They they don't care either. It's just if they do, then I mean they do. But me personally, nah, I don't care. Back to you, Tech. Yeah, I, I mean me. Just because I'm a fan, I'll chime in just to see what he talks about. But like me and Remark mentioned before, we we don't want to have. All these legends talk about the current product because it gets boring. They have enough of that. I'm going to hear you guys talk about old stories, talk about what it was like to wrestle in WWE, and be a legend. That's why we tune into the show. Not that he talk about the current product. We can hear that and listen to everything else. Now, let's talk about the heart, the dungeon, and what it was like growing up in the dungeon and in Canada and Stampede Wrestling and Steve and all heart pranks and the Bulldogs and Dynamite Kid and wrestling Yokozuna. And, you know, let's see about that kind of stuff. Not the current product. So, I'll tune to real quick your thoughts. I know we have a caller calling in. Really? I'm not even caring about the show. I'm sorry. But it's like. The only thing we will run here is, like, different stories. If he has guests on there, like, different people he has associated himself with and, like, can tell stories that we never heard of before, that would make the show better. But if he talks about the um, products and everything, I don't want him to sound keep sounding bitter because everybody keeps saying he sounds bitter when he talks about things. And I'm like, oh, man, it's getting bad. So, yeah, it's... I hope I hope it be well for him, but I don't know. I really can't tell. Yeah, I think everybody pretty much agree on that. Now, something I want to point out, and we'll we'll go we'll go to Raw, post the Tumble Fun stuff. Saw so, you know I saw some of Raw. Something that stuck out to me. See if you guys agree. Rick Flair being on TV right now. I mean, I love Flair. Flair's thirties playing the game. But I don't I don't care to see him anymore, especially the man. To me, I feel he's taken away from Charlotte's push because when you see Flair, you see Flair. I think he's overshadowing her, and I pretty much enjoyed her when she was by herself, when she was just Charlotte. Well, even if she turned heel, let her be heel in her own way instead of having Ric Flair out there. To me, he does nothing for her at all. Um, what do you guys think? Do y'all guys agree? Yeah. Yep, I agree. Yep, I agree too. I mean, it's great to see Flair. I love Flair. Don't get me wrong, but it just it just overshadows. Uh, um, Angry Mark, you, you agree with that? I I, I think that Flair overshadowed Charlotte. I, I mean, <laughs> Flair's always going to get his pop. How are you going to completely turn Charlotte heel with Rick there getting woos and cheers all the time for being, you know, one of the greatest guys to ever grease a wrestling ring? You know, just pay Rick to stay home. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. seriously, uh, I don't understand the point of it anymore. I think it's great for Rick that he gets to travel with his daughter. I think that's every parent's dream, you know. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to do anything for advancing her character. Yeah. Okay, let's talk. Yeah, what Angry Mark said, uh, I think it's mostly just a parent deal when you consider everything Flair has been through. It's, it's more so just about his dream of, uh, you know, traveling with his daughter and seeing his uh, his daughter succeed. Uh, I know Ric Flair cries all the time, and people make fun of it. But uh, when they did that WrestleMania special, uh, like last year, and I think it was like Charlotte, Sasha, and whoever were like mm-hmm. a Triple H's entrance, and like Ric yeah. Flair was crying. You could see like mm-hmm. the genuine happiness, oh, yeah, you know, like yeah, he was yeah. really happy. So I, I don't, I don't mind it too much. That's probably what it really is. He just wants to see his daughter succeed. So, and I'm sure Charlotte herself probably doesn't mind. 
Bring back David Flair. That's all I want to see. Bring him back. I enjoyed David <laughs> Flair back in the day. I don't know about you guys, but I enjoyed David Flair and Crowbar. And Daphne, though, they think was fun. Oh, yeah. Psycho Flair. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely fun. Uh, and, and, of course, with, with Raw, AJ and Jericho, really, I mean... It's not the bleed. You think they're going to feud and fight each other? Now they're teaming up against New Day? I'm confused. What's really going on here? I know in this game, boy, I know you got your thoughts on that. Mm, I mean, I, I'm actually, I, I think it's cool to see them tagging, but it would only be cool if they were tagging against a team that can really push them to that level who can really, you know, compliment them in the ring. Right now, there's no real tag teams that can really compliment them like that. So, that, that's the problem with them being a tag team. Like, who's really going to compliment them in the ring? I mean, I mean, I mean to 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 be fair, I mean, New Day can can New Day can work in the ring. They are good, but like you said, falls I think he falls the athletic athleticism. Like you said, this is you know who's really out there. I mean, the Usos could, but they're not on AJ and uh, Jericho's level. So, like you said, it's kind of a little lost. Exactly. And, and that's that. That's the problem with them being a tag team. It's like, it, it's a good idea, and it's something that people want to see and people will actually support and get behind. But unfortunately, you know, who are they going to wrestle against? Who's going to really compliment them and really get, the, get them, you know, on, on point? Like, I can't think of a tag team. The Usos are high flyers. You know, and New Day, you know, they, they, they're good workers. They can work, but, you know, they no way near AJ or Jericho's level, you know what I mean, as far as ring performance and stuff. I mean, I guess you can, like, I guess you can say, you know, maybe somebody else, but whoever else you can choose, they not on the roster right now or they not wrestling or on television right now. So who are you going to go to? Is it me? AJ AJ has to do something with his hair. That haircut just it irritates my soul. It looks weird with it. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. And, and Jericho physically just looks weird as a whole as well. Like he's kind of like half fat, half muscular. Like what's really going on here? Yeah, how do you? He looks like the he looks like a lawn gnome. Yeah, he does. Good point. You know, but am I the only person? that really sees this whole tag team just as an opportunity to keep them together, to shine the spotlight on Styles, just for one of them to turn on each other so they have a fourth match at Mania so AJ Styles gets his WrestleMania moment? Am I the only one that sees this? Nope. No, not really. All right, good. Let's make sure we're all on the same goddamn page here. (laughs) Well, yeah, I, I, I see your vision. You know what I'm I mean, ne- ne- then we're going to have to put up, I mean, hopefully Jericho goes back to Fozzie or something, but please, WWE, I do not want to see 80 matches of AJ and Jericho like Dolphin Owens. I swear to God, I'm just I'm going to go on a bender for like a month. Mm. Hey, it, it could always be 1997 and 1998, where the Rock and Triple H fought each other literally every night on Raw, you know, on live shows, and on Shotgun Saturday nights, and on Superstars. We saw that match, I don't know how many times. They actually fought against each other at the same pit review two years in a row. Yeah, wow. that's true. That's but, really I mean, true. But, but to be fair, at that time... You know, it was the attitude era. Everybody was working. You know, we didn't mind seeing Rock and Triple H. You know, I mean, even though they fought each other in almost every incarnation of each other, all their all their matches are pretty good. So, you know, to be fair. Hey, off topic. I can't figure out what I want to do. A shot of Hunter Proof, uh, snops, hot cinnamon snops, or a shot of Everclear. Do them Everclear. all. Everclear. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Ever okay. clear it is. Hold on. Now, uh, going to bring in the caller, um, Saltine. Stay, stay on hold, brother. 
We're going to break a call in 941 area code. Welcome to Something to the Mad Radio. Yo, 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 what up, family? Yo, what up, family? Yo, what up, family? What? Hello? What's going on, Gil? How you feeling, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? Gil, no, where are you? I had a beer in hand listening to y'all tell it like it is as usual. Oh, uh, Mark, just if you can't decide, just do all of them, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, it seems like you got competition in you, Mark. All right, guys, I'm back. Holy shit. You, you, my, you sinuses, you, my sinuses are clear. Uh, holy fuck. <sighs> Thank you, Everclear. Uh, 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 Angry Mark, you got a competition. Go, tell them what I you got, got in com- your head. Hmm. What does somebody have in their hand? Gil Mill, so tell, tell me what you had in your hand. I apologize, I'm dealing with technical difficulties. Gil, can you hear us? Why is our fucking phone system acting like an autistic it's kid? Not, it's not us, I believe it's Gil. I don't think Dale Gil can hear us. You and just Gil called Gil autistic? Which is that? <laughs> I think it's Gil, Gil Hill, Gil Mill. I think he has to call back his phone drops. So if you still there? Wait, no, you didn't answer the question. Yeah, I'm still Gil here. No, I didn't. That was you. I didn't at all. Always throw it back on the fucking drunk. Thank you. Hey, at least you got easy. At least, you know, you're not, not a black man to blame us for everything, right? Mm-hmm. Gil Mill will be uh, joining us back. <clears throat> I believe we have a 704 number. Welcome out to the Matt Radio. 704, are you code? Yo, what's up? It's me. Call from an alternate number. Okay. Alternate number sounds a lot better. Um, welcome. It was saying you are in competition with Angry Mark. Let Angry Mark know what you have in your hand. Oh, I just got Budweiser. No, I'm a rookie compared to Angry Mark. And I've been drinking for years. What does that tell you? It tells me that you're not a quitter, and I can appreciate that, sir. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I apologize no, about earlier, but guys, don't buy life-proof cases. They really, really muffle you. Know about that, Angry Mark? Uh, life Life cases? What the hell is a life, life proof? Case? Have no idea. Is it something like a little, a little like fairy person puts like their life in this little thing because they're like, you know, weird or something and in the praying and shit? <laughs> Please explain that to us. Well, there's life proof and otter box for your cell phones. I, know I had an otter box that it did its job before I had to bury it, so to speak. But now I got life proof, which is much stronger. But now nobody can hear me speak. Hmm. Hmm. I got you. And it's a Game Boy. Do you have a phone case? Do you use phone cases? Yeah, my phone has a phone case to it. Yes. What, what phone case do you use? Uh, I believe it's an otter box. It goes to my S5. Are you pleased with it? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm very pleased with it. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and it, uh, Angry Mark, do you have? Do you even have? What kind of phone do you have? Do you have a flip phone? No, no, no. I actually have a Samsung Galaxy Five. And no, according, to the the box, according to the box, it's a smartphone. Y'all are ahead of me. I'm still using my S3. Uh. <laughs> Shout out to the S3. So, um, so what phone do you have? 
Um, I'm a very simple person with cell phones. I just have a basic flip phone. So, yeah. Wait, so... You don't so, got one of those Obama phones, do you? <laughs> do you have one of them Obama phones, too? The ones you get free with the government? Do you have those? I don't even know what that is. All I know is I'm not a cell phone person. The Obama phones is the the, the government issue phones, the ones they send you free with the minutes attached to it. Oh, uh, I guess so. I don't know. They 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 stopped sending them to me after my twentieth. <laughs> Anything gave you? Do you ever have an Obama phone? Yeah, I got one and gave it to my grandmother actually because she needed a cell phone. So, my mom here. That is, that is a good man. I got a toast to that. Break to the food. There you go. Oh, look at Alpha Nana. Got to look Alpha Nana in the cell phones. I mean, yeah. it's ridiculous because these cases cost like ninety dollars. You know, uh, mine was a little cheaper because I have an older phone. But my goodness, you know, all that strength when you can't hear anybody say anything. You know. Yeah. Well, um, how long yeah. before you throw it across the room, Mark? Oh my God, uh, this is a true story. I uh, I have went through at least eight galaxies in the past two years. True story. Wait, did 100% you say eight? Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. my other galaxy five, uh, we didn't get along because you know, just. That goddamn game, that war game I was playing, I got so pissed off about it. <laughs> I chucked it as far as I could out my door, and it went into my woods, and it broke. Um, try explaining that for the warranty. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yep. Uh, another one, uh, true story, I was taking a piss at the casino, and the damn thing went in the toilet. So, well, yeah, that that really happened in Baltimore. I wouldn't dig it out, so I had a janitor do it. So, yep, I kind of stood there, waited for a janitor, reaching with his gloves, and shout out, he was a white guy, not a black guy. So he mm. dug in there and grabbed the old phone, put it in a little so, bag, and went back to the poker table. Life was cool easier with flip phones. Well, so how do you how do you text with a flip phone? I know I know it takes you a little longer. Uh, I don't know how to answer that. I rarely use my cell phone. I hate cell phones. If it was up to me, I would destroy them all. But that would make me a terrorist. So yeah. Mm. And it's a game boy. Tell tell us who you better wrestling. Your first cell phone. Do you remember it? Uh, it was a Star Trek, and it was 1999. It was right after I graduated high school, actually. So that was my first uh, cell phone, the Motorola Star Tech. Oh. So yeah, I was uh. Yeah, had, had the old, well, you the should. Old you, I was say, you should know. I was out there in the streets yeah. back then. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Had, yeah. Had them burners, boy. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, that was my first phone. So. Well. With that. You know, with that being said, of course, this being CB Tuesday, Donald Trump, of course, uh, of course, is running for election for president. Of course, Donald Trump did have some influential background in the world of wrestling. Of course, Trump plowed to be the host at WrestleMania 4 and WrestleMania 5. Donald Trump, I believe, was at, what was it, WrestleMania? Was it WrestleMania 25? 23. 23. Yeah. 23 standing next to Lashley. And um, uh, at the end of shaving Vince McMahon's uh, bald head. Um, some of NFC Game Boy, uh, thoughts of uh, Donald Trump in wrestling as a whole. Um, I know you remember WrestleMania 23 that time. Uh, did you enjoy that storyline? Uh, it, 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 I guess it was cool at the time. You know, Donald Trump is one of those people where, well, number one, he's a Gemini. And to me, I, I know y'all probably like why the signs and stuff. My my brother is a Gemini, and they're very confusing people. One minute they want to save the world, the next minute they like fuck the world. And Donald Trump reminds me of one of those people that, depending on how he feels when he wakes up, that is what he's going to do that day. 
um, back when he was in the storyline, he was giving out free money, you know, money falling from the ceiling and everything, going against Vince or something. Him and Vince McMahon are very, 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 very good friends. And, you know, I guess it was just a way to bring him in, to, to, of course, to having a celebrity at WrestleMania, somebody who can really, you know, get the, the people talking. And I think that's around the time his shows and stuff was getting ready to come on, too, like the Apprentice show. They was talking about doing that back in yeah. the days. I don't think it came out yet. I think they was thinking about doing it. But um, me personally, now looking at the Donald Trump I see now, um, I, I am – Matter of fact, I don't even think I can say it on our show. I, I don't. I don't think it's appropriate. And I'm just going to keep my my thoughts on this. Maybe from another day or something. I'm I'm not even going to speak on it. I'll just say that, you know, he did what he did for the time, and you know, the fans liked it. Uh, Bobby Lashley, I guess, liked it, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. So, for real quick. Apparently, he was instrumental to the success of WrestleMania 4 and 5. That was a little bit before my time. So, if that's what they say, then I suppose it has to be the truth. So, you know, um, he it was a one-off deal. He hasn't really come back since then, which hasn't really bothered me. I think it probably annoys McMahon that, you know, he went through all that stuff with his wife, trying to win political places, and it didn't work out unless we see Donald Trump win. So... I'm sure that probably annoys Vince, but uh, as far as Donald Trump the person goes, he's a bigot, and I'm not going to go into any detail about that, but uh, it's pretty clear. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. He, you know, Trump <clears throat> was very influential in WrestleMania success, WrestleMania 4 and 5. Also, uh, um, you know, of course, doing uh, the whole deal with um, WrestleMania 23, <clears throat> Donald Trump throws some horrible punches. Remember when he had, was it was it when WrestleMania when he tackled Vince and did them punches? Remember that? Definitely yeah. horrible. Uh, <clears throat> well, who was horrible? Um, Gil Mill, uh, real quick, your thoughts on uh, Donald Trump and WWE? Well, I don't have a problem with it because you know. He's universally known, and him running for president and being at the top of the races, if I'm not mistaken, the top of the polls, I mean, it's only helping WWE with publicity. So, I mean, if I could bring a guy like Donald Trump into my promotion with all the attention that I would get, I'm all for it. And uh, like uh, uh, what's-his-name said a little earlier, he was instrumental in WrestleMania 4 and 5 because they were at the uh, Trump Plaza, I believe. So I'm cool with it. Donald Trump had just as much as he does now as he did back then. <clears throat> if you watch WrestleMania 4 and 5, you actually see him sitting in the front row. <clears throat> oh. Guys, I know WrestleMania isn't really looking promising. We still have, what, four weeks to go, five weeks to go? I know under the Matt Radio will be there <clears throat> WrestleMania. Mhm. And I know. I think we got. We still got a month to go. Yeah, we got a month. Yeah, it's you know, it's still time. What is WrestleMania? Will it be? It's still WrestleMania, but do y'all think it will be as bad? Hope we're wrong. Hopefully, it turns out to be great. But do y'all guys think it will be as bad? It's WrestleMania 11, or WrestleMania 13, or WrestleMania Absolutely. 27. No, 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 no. This, this is going to be a, this is going to be a WrestleMania 27, WrestleMania 18 at best, with a really interesting or weird-looking undercard, but a lackluster main event. Nothing can change that. So, but. And it's a game boy, and I, I know, I know, brother, you're a little down on Mania right now. But uh, do, do you feel is, is, do you feel they can can surpass the, the downplay of it coming up, to getting everybody back excited how Mania should be? Uh, no, and and and, and the piggyback on what Tofa's saying, 
I, I think the real WrestleMania is, is happening in, in the political world. That's the real WrestleMania. It, it's kind of taking the flair away from UFC and boxing and, and, and professional wrestling. It's like the it's like we watch TV and then you turn off your TV and you go outside and it's like the real WrestleMania is going on. So m- me personally, the only reason why I'm excited about WrestleMania is because I get to see Shane McMahon. He is my all-time favorite wrestler. He is my favorite performer as far as professional wrestlers is going. So I finally get to see him actually do a match. Is it 10, 15 years too late? Yeah, but so be it. Other than that, I don't think there's anything they can do. 31, they got by the skin of their teeth. But this year, yeah, I I think it's going to be very lackluster. And unfortunately, the tickets is a bitch. So a lot of people are going to be really, really pissed to be paying all this money for a very, very lackluster WrestleMania. But, you know, like Jim Ross once said, it's, it remains to be seen. So you don't know what's going to happen. It's uh, it's sort of hard because uh, one thing CM Punk said that gave him a lot of a lot of shit from fans, CM Punk would always say, WrestleMania is the draw. It doesn't depend on who's the card. You know, so CM Punk was saying that a lot of people will go ahead and order their tickets to Mania beforehand, like before the card is even announced, just because it's Mania, you know. But then you have other people say, no, like, you know, having The Rock or Lesnar or someone on the card can be more attractive to the card, which it can be. But I think some people do, like, try to get a ticket just because it's WrestleMania. But what do you do when you buy a ticket before the card is finalized? I wanted to find out the car is kind of lackluster. I mean, they don't really do refunds for Mania, right? Uh, yeah, they do refunds. But you have to do it, like, a week or two before Mania. Like, you have to do it, like, a week or two. I think, like, a week a week or two or, like, something like that. They do do refunds. But um, I've heard certain WrestleManias, they don't do refunds. So I don't know if this is a particular one. I'm pretty sure it probably is. But I've heard mixed stories. Some of them was able to get back refunds. Some of them wasn't. And, you know, actually, we can do an episode on that one day. A lot of people were just yeah, freaking yeah, mad because yeah. they wouldn't be able to get their money back. <laughs> no, I've, already, I've, uh, I've already talked to Tech about this before. You know, there's a future DLC where you can do the best and worst of Mania. Well, it's coming up this month. Mm. Dude, we're going to do that for us Mania season right before... Right before uh, we go to Mania, we'll be talking about that. I know right me, Anderson Game Boy, uh, you know, as, as a as a gift, as a Game Boy treated me to Mania, my first WrestleMania at Mania 27, live in Atlanta, Georgia. <clears throat> um, <laughs> I know a lot of people didn't like that Mania at all. Um, I've seen worse Manias, and it was being my first Mania being there, I didn't enjoy myself. Uh, was 27... Thinking of media, was twenty seven as worse as twenty eight? I know NFC Game Boy, you was there live from twenty eight. Um, I know I know Tofu, you was there for twenty seven. What did y'all guys think twenty seven was worse than twenty eight, or vice versa? Angry Mark. What's the question? <clears throat> as bad as twenty seven was. What do you think? Twenty? Do you think WrestleMania twenty eight was worse? <laughs> oh Lord. Um. Wasn't that Rock Rock seeing the T? Yeah, but I'm really leaning towards this one being pretty shitty. Like, I, I mean, we're this one here. It's gonna be a shitty mania. I mean, I just I know for a fact this thing's just gonna tank. You know, yeah, Mania is Mania. You're still getting your diehard marks there. Uh, you know, um, I mean, for Game Boy, it's a media presence. So I didn't hold anything against him for going. Um, but, wow, this card is just going to totally blow. All the injuries, poor promotion, they're just killing themselves. So, my thoughts? Uh, I think they should have held it in a smaller venue. But it was booked. Now it's just a matter of how much money they can make. So 
We're, well, you know, from they, from source from sources from what I got um, earlier earlier this week and actually reading online when it was public. Uh, from what we're getting is that less than seventy thousand tickets have been sold so far for Mania. So do you guys do you guys think between now and in April, do you guys think they'll be able to eclipse past the hundred thousand mark in a C Game Boy and then turn over to Gil? Uh, it's anything's possible. I mean that's that's proven and and to piggyback off your old question uh 28 was definitely much better than 27 and that was uh rock scene of one actually that was the first one rock scene of two up. was uh yeah i know well, rock scene of two was at uh 29 which was also horrible but uh one in miami was was actually really really good and it, it flowed a lot better but um yeah they 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 in they in some trouble they really are and i think they know and it Another article I think came out today about Lesnar being unhappy about uh, yeah. him being in yeah. WrestleMania and stuff. So that's on that note. But will, will we see Lesnar leave and do a crappy match like he did at WrestleMania 20? Or do you Might think he'll do business? Uh. I don't think he'll leave only because he's still in the contract, and he's a lot older now, so he knows that you know it's a lot detrimental to him. So I don't think that he'll leave, but I mean he he will make it somewhat harder when it comes to negotiating and everything and stuff. But I don't I don't think he'll leave. But everybody's hurt, and I mean if they're not hurt or they just not with the company, you know what I mean? Like we got you know Sting is hurt, and you know what I mean. We got AJ Styles, but you know AJ Styles is doing a little whatever, whatever. Which we pretty much gonna see him in Jericho at WrestleMania for like the fifth time. You know what I mean? It's just what, what, what do you do when it's kind of like a little kid and all your favorite toys are broken, and then you gotta go in your toy chest and find your old old yeah. toys. Yeah, to try, man with try the play with them. <laughs> yeah, Take yeah, you know, with. like all your favorite toys is broke or they missing <laughs> or something. And you gotta go in your old toy chest and, and take the old old toys you used to have fun with and try to make some, try to make some fun out of that. It, it, it kind of reminds me how WrestleMania is. It's like they trying to go back and and get all the people they can to try to make the salvage this WrestleMania, and it's just it just don't look good. Well, I got something. I got something that I think you'll like, Game Boy. All right. What's that? So every every week I bring breaking news to you guys. Okay. So okay. the angry one, angry one did some digging. Now, last year Stephanie McMahon sold a bunch of stock because yeah, it's publicly correct. traded. Because it's publicly traded, I did some digging into the SEC records. She sold her stock to Shane. She what? She sold what? That stock to Shane McMahon last August. Shane McMahon uh-huh. now has a bigger bigger financial interest in the company than Stephanie. Mm-hmm. The, um, well. This is this is one hundred percent fact. Uh, and from what I heard when I started digging into this about two o'clock this afternoon, is the negotiations between Vince and Shane have been going on since. December. Wow. Mm. Okay. So, with Shane buying Stephanie's, a large chunk of Stephanie's stock, because here's the deal. Stephanie had two different shares of stock. Okay. Her dad gave her an additional amount of stock in 2010, which brought her total value in the company to right around $35 million. Okay. Shane at the time had 20. Well, Shane bought an additional $12 million worth of shares from Stephanie. So Shane now has a higher controlling interest than his sister. So the writing, I think, is already on the wall for Shane to be back at the WWE full-time. Um, don't count on, you know, seeing him every week on TV. But uh, so sure my game source, boy, one like that. My sources are telling me that it's a done deal. Shane is getting the executive position job, 
And it's oh, and you want to know what's really funny is I brought this to everybody. Isn't it amazing how WWE just put out today about getting deals in Asia for the WWE Network? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. let, let, let's let, let's talk about <clears throat> another failure of WWE called the WWE app. Who uses that? Uh, that, that has to be one of the most, and this is my area with, with technology, that has to be one of the most failed <laughs> bombs, busts, when it, you would think with WWE being a juggernaut. And, and I already know a lot of companies that have a lot of money sometimes are, are very <laughs> efforts in any way when launching a mobile app because it's it's, it costs a lot of money. And you don't always get enough profit or always get a good turn value for it. And there they be comes up with that app and gosh, that app was horrible. <laughs> I mean, the app never worked. Me and the Game Boys been at live raw shows, SmackDown, house shows. It never worked. You can't even vote. It was it was wow. just bad. This this is bad. Um <laughs> shout out to um Saltine, hold up, Marine Saltine. I'm Marine Saltine in a second. Uh, guys, uh, set up with Gil. Your thoughts on the WWE app? 